Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about Tropical Storm Danny that is brewing, as well as Hurricane Enrique as the tropics are heating up. So if you do like weather-related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Uh, good morning, everyone. This is June 28th. What you're looking at here is the latest satellite picture off uh, the southeast coast. And we've got a pretty good swirl happening. Uh, the National Hurricane Center had a 20% chance of this developing just yesterday. And now they bumped it up to about a 70% chance of this developing. You can actually see the swirl here. It's got a lot of great low level center, but a lot of the convection is being sheared off to the west. And they're already getting inundated with some heavier rains along the coast of uh, South Carolina and uh, into Georgia here. And this will continue moving off to the west, northwest of 15 to 20 miles an hour. In fact, uh, the Hurricane Center is actually scheduled to go out into this system later on this afternoon to see if there's a, a tropical storm development happening. It's got about a window. It's only got about another 10 to 12 hours left for it to actually form. But you can definitely see it's about 190 miles east southeast of hilton head island uh, south carolina and that will continue propagating off to the west at northwest so there is a small window that it could spin up of uh, and, and be named tropical storm danny before it actually makes landfall because it's got a great low level center with it it just needs a little bit more convection along uh, around the center to be able to be named as a tropical storm but Definitely be on the lookout for this storm that's going to be impacted with some very heavy rain. And we also have this other feature down here into uh, the, the main development region. They have a 40% chance of this developing also. And this will continue to, to move off to the, to the west, northwest as we go through time. And so we'll go over those details as well. So if we kind of expand the view and you can take a look at what's, what, what's really happening, Here's, here's the, uh, the overall surface map uh, this morning. You can definitely see this stalled cold front along the Texas uh, panhandle. That's bringing some very heavy rain into New Mexico. We also, this is Hurricane Enrique off here into the Pacific. We also have that tropical wave that we've been talking about. That has continued pushing off to the west. That's actually making, uh, making uh, inland now into Houston. That will continue to move it up into North Texas later on this afternoon and there's that little small feature off the coast of the carolinas that's possibly going to be forming into tropical storm danny and we also have this invest 95l that we're watching out here in the uh the main development region and there's another wave that's actually uh forming behind that one so there's definitely a lot to talk about uh in the tropics so one of the main reasons why we're seeing some little bit of uptick in activity is the man and julia oscillation where as you can kind of see it's this is the uh, latest outlook from june 28th to june july the 12th it's in phase one that's going to be going into a favorable phase especially as we go into phase two over the next three to seven days so and you can definitely see that has a lot of unsettled weather for much of the deep south and a little, a little bit more susceptible for tropical storm development. So we do have a small window here between now and say the first week of July that conditions are a little bit more favorable for tropical storm development. But then once we get into you know the second week of July, it starts to definitely starts to dwindling our chances uh, for uh, tropical storm development. As we take a look at the the latest. Uh, invest models of that 96 uh, l of that system off the south carolina coast you can definitely see a lot of the guidance has this continue pushing off into the west at northwest it'll probably be making landfall later on this evening so it's going to be right on the cusp right on the borderline if this is going to be named a storm or not remember claudette got named basically right as it made landfall but a lot of the dynamics are starting to come together and it's starting to swing in that favor that it, yes it could have enough uh, you know, it has a spin already. It just needs the convection along the center to be properly named, and it won't take much with say, some some of the daytime heating that we're going to get going to start bubbling up that atmosphere. So that's why the hurricane hunters are going to fly into that system later on this afternoon and get a true depiction of if this thing is actually going to be developing or not before it makes landfall. 
Uh, but it's going to bring a lot of rain, regardless if it develops or not. Uh, you can definitely see the Weather Prediction Center has a marginal risk for excessive rainfall along the coast into Savannah, Georgia, getting along to South, South Carolina and portions of Georgia with that system. We also have that other highlighted system in the tropical wave that's going to be pushing inland uh, today towards Houston. That'll be spreading into much of North Texas. There's that stalled frontal boundary that's bringing all the heavier rain for the midsection of the country. But we also have a moderate risk for excessive rainfall into New Mexico. And you guys are going to be hit like with kind of a, what a kind of a one two punch with the stalled front with uh, that's going to bring along the heavier rain. But also you're going to have additional moisture from Hurricane Arike down here into the Pacific that you're going to be able to, to uh, tap into a, as well. And so that's why this area is right here in uh, southern portions of New Mexico is highlighted to be more of an enhanced risk for excessive flooding rains as you're going to be hit on both, with both sides. Now let's kind of zoom in to Hurricane Enrique. It's been a profitable hurricane. That's actually been the uh, first hurricane of the season, already the fifth named storm in the Pacific that breaks all records. We continue to break records every, every, every time we, we look at, you know, of course, all the heat that's happening in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, this week and especially today but yeah Hurricane Enrique will continue moving off into the north northwest it is supposed to be downgraded to a tropical storm sometime tomorrow but this will continue lifting off into the north northwest and it will be in, impacting the Cabo St. Lucas area so if you got vacation plans down there if you're actually in the area right now you're going to be impacted with a tropical storm probably some 40 to 50 mile per hour winds and some very heavy rain and that those rains will help push some of the moisture into new mexico and enhance uh the precipitation so if we take a look at the winds over the next you know three three days you can definitely see that starts to subside as we go through due time but as this continues moving off into the northwest west yeah, places in Cabo St. Lucas are probably going to be impacted with tropical storm force winds, probably in the range of 40 to 50 miles an hour, some very heavy rain, and especially along in the southeastern parts of Mexico. So definitely be on the lookout uh, for some very heavy rain and some higher winds as we go throughout the day, the next uh, several days. But now let's take a look at the overall probability guidance, the latest EPS guidance from that 95L system, that invest system out here in the main development region. Over the next 46, 48 to 96 hours, the EPS probability guidance gives a pretty good chance of it developing into a tropical depression by the time it gets into uh, the Lesser Antilles. But we also have this other feature down here into the Bay of Campeche. Uh, that's about a 30% chance of possibly forming. Like I mentioned, we do have a, a little bit more favorable phase of tropical storm development over the next you know three seven if not almost getting into eight or nine days but after that it definitely starts to wane so i'll be looking out for a pretty active time frame of some of these uh, some of this starting to bubble up and possibly coming a, a, a tropical storm over that time frame so as we continue to look at that 95l invest a lot of the computer guidance as this continued to shift off into the west, northwest, possibly going into the Lesser Antilles, getting pulled up, uh, possibly going into the Caribbean. But that's that's the first wave. A lot of the guidance has the possibly that second wave that's actually behind it that has a little bit more favorable uh, activity for that to actually form as this continues uh, pushing off into the west as we go through into next weekend. So if we take a look at the overall vert uh, velocity uh, potential, the vertical velocity potential, this is what I kind of look at too as another element to look at for possibly lift in the atmosphere. Where these reds and oranges are, that's your sinking air. That's typically where you're not going to be able to get tropical storm development. And then over here in Africa, off the coast here, you can definitely see a lot of the blues showing up. That's your upward rising motion air that's happening. It definitely has a lot more lift to it and able to thunderstorms to rise. But you can definitely see on much of the Caribbean, uh, much along the Southeast coast, it's pretty much in a neutral phase. So there's not really anything inhibiting uh, the storms to start to rise in that area, but it's not like it's a bullish uh, element as well either. So, but we still have that small window between now and July the 3rd for that upward rising motion to be a little bit more favorable 
for uh, tropical storm development as we take a look at that you know danny that's going to make it be an inland we take a look at the possibly the bay of campeche uh feature but also the invest 95 feature that's going to be moving across uh the west northwest as we go through between july 3rd and july 8th now that time frame that window starts to wane like i mentioned we go into moving out of phase two of the mjo going to the phase three that's a little bit less susceptible for tropical storm development we start to enter some of those yellows and some of the oranges start to enter back in the picture and much of the gulf and much of the caribbean that's going to start suppressing the air somewhat as it goes in that time frame so this is between that third and that eighth time frame so there's definitely a small window over the next week that we could see a uh, tropical storm development but like i mentioned beyond that once we go into week two of july between the eighth and the 13th time frame that's when i think that the, the taps really shut off and it starts to suppress over much of the gulf and much of the caribbean it's going to be very difficult for tropical storm formation to form in that atmosphere as we go into the second uh, week of July. So we got some things to look out for for the next, uh, you know, seven to eight days. So as we zoom into the overall water temperatures, this is another element we kind of look at. Uh, you can definitely see it only takes about 78 degrees, typically about 80 degrees or higher for tropical storm development. There's that feature off the southeast coast into the Carolinas. It's got a lot of shear with it, but it's it's running into it's in the, some of the darker reds right now. So it's right on the cusp of trying to form. So that's why it's really kind of having a hard time uh, to kind of get its act together because a lot of some of the inhibiting factors that are going against it uh, for tropical storm development. But you can definitely see down here in the in the Caribbean, Caribbean where that Invest 95 with that some of that energy is going to be tapping into. Now you're seeing some of those warmer waters, especially as we get into Jamaica, going to the Cayman Islands, get into much of the Dominican Republic, and going to Cuba. So that's where it's a little bit more favorable for that tropical storm development as that system will continue moving off into uh, the west northwest. So as we zoom in into the overall uh, precipital water, uh, uh, you know, the atmosphere, the available water in the atmosphere, you can definitely see right now, this is what your current look is on Monday, the June the 28th. There's that storm system off the coast of the Carolinas. That's going to be pushing off with some very heavy rains. There's that tropical wave that's going to be pushing off into some of the heavier rains. We're talking one to two inch rainfall rates per hour there's no cap in place in much of north texas and much of texas today so so all we go all we need is uh tro you know daytime heating for these thunderstorms to you know rise and turn over and the atmosphere will really start to open up uh as we go into the uh afternoon and the evening hours but there's that first initial band of moisture that's going to be streaming into much of jamaica and much of the cayman islands uh today but back behind it, there's that Invest 95 system that we're looking at that's got a lot of a con convection around the center that we're kind of looking at as this con will continue moving off into the Lesser Antilles. As we move the map forward going into July 1st, there's your Thursday look. Yeah, this unsettled weather pattern, remember we were in phase two of the Man and Julie oscillation, so we got a lot of unsettled down here in the Gulf and along the, along the Southeast coastline. But we're watching that invest so there's a there's that that i can like i mentioned that invest 95 could be po possibly around the lesser antilles by the time we go into july 1st but it's that second wave that's behind it that could be the one to actually ultimately look out for as this will continue uh moving off into the west northwest as we go into that july 3rd time frame there's that first initial wave that we're looking at right now. That's probably going to be over uh, Jamaica spreading rain into the, um, them. That will eventually get into the Cayman Islands. But there's that second wave behind that could be the main player as we go through time, as this will continue moving off into the west, northwest, as we go into next weekend. There's the look by the time we go into July 4th holiday. Yeah, we could be looking at a lot of rain setting up with that with that system over Jamaica, over the Cayman Islands, over much of Cuba, and that will continue spreading off into the west, northwest, and eventually possibly getting some of that precipitation into the Gulf of Mexico by then. And then we'll have to be looking out for the southeast coast as we're still in that little bit of a small window in that first week of July 
that we could see tropical storm development by then. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Uh, do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.